Hey everyone, Brady from texturelabs.org here. In this video, we're gonna check out a very cool setup in Photoshop to create these heavily stylized collage portraits and images. Lots of room to experiment here. In fact, what you're seeing right now is not a time lapse or anything. That's just me sliding a single value back and forth. And we're gonna use a couple of textures that I created just for this tutorial. I hunted down some really cool vintage magazines and created these the old fashioned way, which gave me a whole new respect for collage artists, but I shot them with a macro lens. These are totally free to download. The reason I can post these up for free is because of the Texture Labs community on Patreon. So a huge thank you to the Patreon community. Together we are cutting out the middleman. I can create resources like this that everyone can access. If you like that kind of thing and you're able to support the project, it is much appreciated. All right, let's get into Photoshop and get started. <laughs> All right, I've got a photograph here to get started with, but I wanna make a note about the photo selection because it's fairly important for an effect like this. The thing about this image is that we can easily imagine reducing it to just big, simple blocks of light and dark values, as opposed to something like this, which would be much harder to reduce to simple black and white shapes. I think the distinction is easier to make when you're looking at black and white images, but even if things are color to begin with, the same principle applies. So I like these close up dramatically lit portraits for this effect, but also also simple recognizable objects and images. Hope that helps a little bit. So I've got this image and I'll first note that I'm somewhere in the 3000 pixels high range. I only mention that because I'm gonna use one of these Photoshop filters, the cutout filter, and it gives different results at different resolutions. So that's my starting point. Obviously a black and white image, but I'm still in regular RGB color mode, not grayscale color. And the first thing I'm gonna do is right click and make this layer a smart object. That's just gonna give me a little more flexibility to adjust things along the way. Then what we want is to kind of break this image up into big solid shapes. And I'm mostly gonna be relying on the filter I mentioned a minute ago. It's in the filter gallery, the cutout filter, but it's a very finicky filter. It's kind of got a mind of its own. It can be hard to get a good result out of it. So actually before I apply this filter, I'm gonna hit cancel. And I found there are a couple things we can do to the image to get a little bit better results out of the cutout filter. So the first thing is that I wanna make sure I'm starting with a completely desaturated image. This happens to be black and white already, but just in case there are any color values hiding in here, or if this was a color image, I'll use Command or Control U for a hue saturation adjustment and bring the saturation all the way down. All right, next up, I'm gonna apply another filter, the oil paint filter. And I'm gonna crank these first two values all the way up. Lighting is turned off, so these other values don't make a difference, but with these two all the way up, I find it's a nice way to eliminate some noise and grain. And it also seems to create somehow a more streamlined input for that cutout filter. And you just end up getting much better results out of the cutout filter with oil paint applied beforehand. Okay, then last thing, I'm gonna use this image adjustments, shadows and highlights adjustment. And I'm just gonna apply that with its default settings. Shadows and highlights is totally optional here, but I almost always find that if I'm really gonna crush an image down to just solid black and white or just a few values, shadows and highlights really helps to bring out some details that you might not wanna lose, which usually tend to be in the hair or sometimes around the eyes. Okay, then at this point, I'm ready to go back into the filter gallery and try this cutout filter. And the only guideline I'm really gonna stick to in the cutout filter is to leave the number of levels all the way up at eight. And then the goal here with these other two values is to simplify the image as much as I possibly can before losing the essential shapes altogether. Generally, you can bring the edge fidelity all the way down to one and then use edge simplicity to kind of find the right amount of detail, maybe somewhere in this range between six and eight. So I'll go with seven. These two edge values kind of balance each other out. So there's gonna be a little bit of experimenting with these two values to kind of find the right settings for any particular image. Okay, so that gave us some nice cutout shapes. And next up, I need to reduce the image even further. I want this entire thing to be just four colors, four shades of gray. Now we could have done that in the cutout filter by setting the number of levels to four, but this is gonna give us a lot more flexibility. What I'm gonna do is use an adjustment layer, the posterize adjustment layer set to four. And the reason I'm using a posterize adjustment layer instead of applying posterize to the smart object is this. I'm gonna sneak in one more adjustment layer underneath the posterize, a levels adjustment layer. And now I can slide around these levels values and really get a whole lot of control over where those four gray values begin and end. 
And because these are adjustment layers, I can do this in real time. And it's really nice just to have this flexibility to dial things in. So these levels and posterize adjustment layers are really just here to try to regain some control over the cutout filter because it can be tough to get a good result out of that filter on its own. But I feel like we have a nice balance between lights and darks and midtones going here, which takes us to the next step. So what I wanna do here is take each of these four values and fill them in with four different textures. And I also wanna do it in a way that keeps everything live. And the way that's gonna work is initially gonna look like a really strange left turn to make, but it's gonna work like this. I'm gonna apply a gradient map adjustment layer. Then I'm gonna to click to edit the gradient. And the posterized image right now has four values in it, which happen to be evenly spaced values of gray. And what I need to do is replace those four values with solid black, solid red, solid green, and solid blue. So the black can stay black. Then I'm gonna add a point into the gradient and set it to pure red by making sure the values are 255 red, zero green, and zero blue. And I need this red point to sit at exactly the 33% mark, which coincides with that darker gray. Now, it's important that this value 33 gets typed in rather than dragging it to 33%. What you don't see is that dragging it to 33 can actually get you to like 33.5%, and Photoshop just doesn't show you that here. So 33 is red. Next, I want a solid green point. So zero red, 255 green, and zero blue are the values. And I want this to map to the 67% gray tone. So typing in 67. And finally, for the white value, or 100%, I want this to be pure blue. So zero red, zero green, 255 blue. Okay, and that is the gradient map. So it looks kind of weird, right? But check out how we can use these solid colors to place textures only where we want them. So I've got these five textures we looked at in the intro of the video. What I'm gonna do is choose four of them to replace the four values of gray. Generally, that's gonna be one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. You can imagine these are gonna map into the four values of the image from light to dark. So I'm gonna include the color one and drag these four textures in here. When you place an image in a document, Photoshop's gonna scale it down to fit, but I'm just gonna bring these back up and I'll kind of skip through getting all four of these in here. But I've got them layered now from the lightest at the top to the darkest at the bottom. And for now, I'm just gonna leave the dark one turned on. So we want this to live in the blacks and only in the blacks, right? So what I'm gonna do is double click on this layer to get my blending options here. And I'm going to the very bottom slider, blend if for the underlying layers. And I'm gonna bring the white value all the way down to the very bottom, zero. Meaning this will be visible only over pixels with a value of zero, which is black. All right, next up is gonna be the darker midtones texture, and I wanna key this into the red areas. So the same premise, but with a little bit of a twist. I'm gonna double click for the blending options, and this time I wanna switch over to blend if red. And this time I'm gonna bring the underlying layer black value all the way to the top, meaning this texture will only show up where the underlying values are full blast red. That's it. Next value turned on, and here we wanna blend if green, so bringing the black slider all the way up, and this will only show up over green. Then finally, the last texture, blend if, and this one will be set to blue. I'm gonna drag the black all the way up so that this lives only in the blue areas. So just like that, we've got all of our textures mapped in, and check this out. We can still move any of the textures around and kind of find a placement that looks right, but not only that, I can go all the way down to this levels adjustment and even revisit how much of the highlights we want, how much of the mid-tones, where those black and white points live, and really get a variety of different looks depending on how this gets adjusted. There's something really rewarding about just changing these values and watching the image change in real time. So that is the basic approach. Of course, I can't help myself but to drop in a few more textures and bring it to life a little bit. This is actually a piece of hazy glass that I shot, but set to overlay mode. I think it kind of looks like glue that's been brushed over everything. Then how about a grungy folded paper texture? This might also look nice in overlay mode. And what's nice is that once you have this set up, you can try a different image in here, either by pasting it into this smart object or even just dragging in another image down here under the adjustment layers. And if I hold the Alt or Option key, I can even drag a copy of all these same filters, the cutout filter and everything, and apply them to this new layer and quickly try out this treatment on all kinds of different images.
All right, well, that's it for now. I hope you guys will enjoy experimenting with this. I'll put a link below to download the textures that I used in this project. Always more stuff like this on the way, so be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.